Hey everybody, Arnaldo here broadcasting from Fidelio's Frequency. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for tuning in for yet another review of uh, the recent reissue on vinyl of the Talking Heads album, Stop Making Sense. So you're asking probably, why do we need another review of this album, um, of this vinyl reissue? Well, the ones that are out there, um, which are very informative, uh, mostly I agree with the content that is in most of these videos or reviews, uh, but I felt like there were a couple of things that I noticed when I was listening and comparing um, the different versions of this album that some of the reviews out there or videos out there kind of missed out on. And I felt like I could add my two cents and share my findings um, with you guys out there so that you can make uh, your decision about um, an, you know, uh, an eventual purchase of this uh, vinyl reissue. So, first of all, um, I wanted to uh, mention what are the two, what are actually two or three copies that I have compared. Uh, first of all, the original limited edition uh, that came out in 1984, um, <clears throat> U.S. edition pressed at uh, uh, SRP, uh, Specialty uh, Records Pressing. The um, super, well, special edition CD, uh, which came out in originally in 1999, then was unavailable for quite a bit and was reissued again in, I believe, the same format. I don't have the 1999 version um, in 2019. And then, of course, the recent reissue uh, that came out just a few weeks ago on uh, double vinyl. So first of all, uh, I wanted to um, do a quick unboxing and compare the artwork and how it differs between the two versions of the uh, vinyl, uh, namely the 1984 original special edition pressing and the uh, current uh, version. So uh, a quick cut to that, and then we'll be back on the um, comparison of the uh, sound between the two reissues. On the right, we have the original uh, US version. On the left is the reissue. Same hype sticker, uh, at least the color scheme. But the wording obviously is different black text on red on the left the reissue has a spot varnish or spot gloss uh, feature on the semicircle um, which is a nice touch I actually like that and on the left it was just like a semi gloss finish of the cover the original came with the booklet half inserted over the um, cover and this black inner sleeve is interesting texture of the black inner sleeve with the red labels and the reissue um, comes with a plain white paper inner sleeves, which I replace, obviously, um, and same labels. Now here are the booklets side by side. I feel that the um, reissue has an improvement on the booklet for many reasons. First of all, the saturation of the colors, the skin tones are a bit more natural. And as you can see here, main difference is the Chris France picture was replaced, whereas in the original, he was in the shadows. Now we have a full view of Chris's face. The fold out, the sequences on the pictures, uh, the pictures are all the same, they're all present, but the order of the pictures were different. Um, they've kind of been scrambled up. And here's just like an overview of the entire booklet. Here's the fold out that I just mentioned. Um, where the pictures are scrambled differently in the reissue. Overall, like I said again, the booklet is an improvement on the reissue over the original because it also has essays by the four band members um, and also the reissue credits at the bottom. So first off, I wanted to give a uh, shout out to two other videos that I watched that were very informative on this topic and for pretty much for the most part I agree with and that is the review by David at Safe and Sound Texas Audio Excursions uh, who did an excellent um, overall um, review uh, including also the video component because I'd like to preface that uh, this is this album that came out uh, is kind of like the soundtrack or the audio portion of the Jonathan Demi uh, movie um, of the uh, stopping making sense, stop making sense tour or concert. So David goes in a little bit more into detail, also presenting aspects of the Blu-ray. Uh, I mean, of the movie. And 
other review is the one from Darko, a much more popular channel than mine, who goes into a lot of detail comparing the different uh, CD versions. Uh, he does some spectrum analysis and compares the uh, compression or, uh, ratio of the original 1984 CD, um, the new the special edition that came out um, remastered digitally remastered a few years ago I think it was 1999 and also uh, talks about the compression ratio and the uh, spectrum analysis of the recent vinyl issue but does not touch upon what I would like to do uh, on a comparison with the original US um, vinyl version so let's cut to the differences that I was able to pick up. So first of all, I'd like to preface by saying these are just my opinions. These are the things that I noticed on while I was listening on my system. And I'll take this opportunity uh, to post my components because I've never done that uh, up until this moment. I'm not a big fan. I really don't specialize uh, in uh, shootouts, uh, but I will list my components in the description uh, just for clarity of what um, I'm actually listening uh, through. And um, I will just briefly summarize what I was able to pick up on. So <clears throat> first of all, the, um, the 1984 pressing, um, needless to say, is a single LP, only has nine tracks, uh, kind of in a scrambled um, track listing, uh, even though tracks are missing. Uh, they resequenced it probably for more uh, an appealing listen, uh, and it does not uh, follow any type of chronological order, obviously, um, which the new uh, double LP does, which in addition to what was released before on Blu-ray and on the um, special edition uh, CD, uh, which does not include extra tracks that were never before released, um, and they are namely uh, the track Cities and Big Business Izimbra, which um, are included as bonus tracks on the uh, audio portion of the Blu-ray. So overall, I have to say that the original, um, at least the U.S. pressing, uh, was cut uh, a little louder uh, than the current ratio, which seems kind of strange because lately the trend is to cut uh, newer vinyl releases a bit louder than originals. In any event, the original was mastered uh, by Jack Skinner with the help of Ted Jensen at Sterling Sound. And on the new um, vinyl version, we have the return of Ted Jensen, who also remastered it. And I believe it was cut by Joe Nino Hernes, um, if I'm not mistaken, the lacquer was cut by him. And um, so overall, like I said, we have a slightly louder cut on the original. And uh, the, uh, the surprising difference um, that I noticed firsthand is the channels are reversed on three tracks, uh, namely, uh, uh, Burning Down the House, Girlfriend is Better, and Life During Wartime. The channels are swapped left to right. Not really sure what was the original intention. Um, I compared it to the original and I compared it to the um, CD version, special edition, and I have a feeling that the new reissue um, uses the same transfer that the um, CD was using because they both match in terms of channel um, placement. So the same differences that I find uh, between the swapping of channels uh, with the uh, OG and the vinyl reissue is also the same as a swapping on the uh, CD version. So what else did I notice? I noticed overall the, the original uh, vinyl has more a live feel. Like when I listen, I get the feeling of being in an arena versus the uh, reissue where it seems that the soundstage is a bit flat. Um, I don't get that feeling of being in a in like an amphitheater or an arena. And that is the first uh, noticeable difference. Um, the crowd noise, uh, there is not a lot of crowd noise or applause on this album overall, but where 
there is, um, I noticed that it's a bit more mixed down or a bit more, not as prominent on the reissue as it is on the um, original uh, vinyl version. The instruments. So I'll just go into detail and tell you what I've picked up on, on some of the things that bounced out at me. So overall first, the reissue, um, the bass seems to be almost like they turned up the bass level um, where you get more bass, but it's, I don't call it a healthy bass. It's a bit more bloated, not as defined. Uh, some will say that the original has a punchy, uh, punchier bass. Um, that seems to be like a very common buzzword when people are reviewing um, uh, records, but I want to say it's a bit more defined. It's very present on the original, more present on the reissue, but I don't think it's a healthy bass because um, I feel like the bloated bass kind of um, overshadows some of the details of the other instruments. And namely, um, in Life, um, uh, Life During Wartime on that track, it's a little too thumping. Now we know that the Talking Heads loved to introduce almost like a, a dance element to their songs. Uh, but in this case, it seems almost clubby. <laughs> it turns a track a little bit into like a club track because it's thumping very loudly. Uh, on Burning Down the House, I noticed that the bass in this case hides a bit of the synths. And most notably on Once in a Lifetime, one of my favorite tracks of the Talking Heads and on this album, uh, you get the impression, like you can hear the finger, almost the finger plucking of the bass um, on the original, whereas you don't get the same type of definition. You don't feel like the plucking of the chords. Uh, and by the way, Tina Weymouth, uh, I think very underrated bass player, amazing uh, bass player. And I, I wanna say very key element to the sound of the talking heads. But that aside, I noticed mostly on Once in a Lifetime, the bass seems to be off on the reissue. Same thing for the guitars, they're not as defined. One of the examples was on Swamp. The guitar on the left channel is not as defined on Slippery People. There's like an intro um, where there's a guitar lick where on the original, it sounds more piercing and, more, and, and sharper. Um, whereas on the reissue, it sounds a bit more um, muted, I wanna say. And then uh, on the chorus of um, What A Day, the guitar is almost uh, buried in the mix. Now, I don't know if there were any mix choices, uh, but it seemed pretty obvious to me, or it could be just a result of the different mastering. Um, and one thing that is uh, blatant is that on the I compared, I, I didn't do a thorough comparison with the... Um, CD version, but when I was comparing the swapping of the channels, immediately I noticed that the mix on the CD version of um, Psycho Killer, which is the opening track, there's a different drum machine in the mix of the CD versus both the original vinyl and the uh, reissue vinyl. Uh, there's like a clap. There's like a drum clap. Um, on this mix, on the mix that's on here that is not present on either the reissue um, or the original. So that is one of the things that I don't know maybe if someone has the answer to that and knows why there's a different mix on that version versus these two on the vinyl versions, please leave a comment. Um, going back some of the other differences that I noticed, the percussion. Um, the tiring, the talking heads hired um, an amazing percussionist. Um, I, forget, I forget his name at the moment. Probably will come as a superimposed title um, once I figure it out and I go back and read the notes. Uh, they lack detail. They lack the attack um, on the reissue versus the original. Um, especially, I notice it on Life After Wartime and on Slippery People. And then overall, throughout the entire record, and this is where you can tell that um, the reissue does not have the same air and the same presence um, is within the backing vocals, which have more presence on the original versus the reissue. I noticed that especially on Slippery People, 
uh, Girlfriend is Better, and the track that has probably one of the most prominent um, choruses with backing vocals, Once in a Lifetime. <clears throat> uh, did I mention already that the tracks on the original were um, edited for that release, and here you have the full version um, of the tracks. I mean, the edits were not huge, but there are um, some things that were taken out from the original vinyl release that are restored here. However, um, there is a count-in uh, that is on Slippery People that the original actually has, like, a, I think it's Chris France does a count-in to the track, which is totally missing from the CD version and is also missing from the uh, reissue. So, um, overall, what are my final thoughts um, on these two? If I had not heard, if I did not have uh, the original US pressing, I would be totally satisfied with the reissue. Um, it sounds good, but more importantly, it has the full track listing of the show. Um, it has it sequenced, sequenced properly. It has two tracks that were never available uh, before other than on the um, audio portion of the Blu-ray, and that is Cities and Big Business uh, Izimbra. So I do recommend getting this, even if you have uh, the original version. Uh, you can always go back and enjoy the sound of the original version, but you can't get the extra tracks and the correct sequence that you would get if you don't have the uh, reissue, which I believe is becoming a little scarce. Um, maybe they'll do a repress, but it is getting kind of difficult to find. So if you come across it uh, and you like the Talking Heads and we're wondering whether or not to pick it up, I would say yes, definitely pick it up. And if you could find an, an expensive uh, original, uh, and you're just a completist, love the talking heads, or are just curious um, to see or hear if you can pick up on the same differences that I picked up on. I hope I gave you some important facts on it to help you make your decision. And at this point, I am just going to leave you with the two versions and pick whichever you want. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one. Bye.